uh, Marcus, Marquette's all-time leading scorer. I know it's only been a few minutes, 10 minutes or so, but what was the celebration like in the locker room, and like, has it sunk in for you yet? Um, I mean, first and foremost, it wouldn't be possible, you know, without um, without God. You know, I'm so thankful for all that he's blessed me with, the people he's had in my life, and um, that was really shown when I went into the locker room, you know, my teammates being genuinely excited and happy for me, my coaches, you know, being happy for me. Um, it just, it's just a testament to the people that Marquette, you know, has to offer. Um, such great people, first and foremost, and that's what drew, what drew me to want to come here. Um, just first-class people, and none of this, none of what I've accomplished would be possible without them and their selfless characters. So I, I'm just super appreciative for everyone that's helped get me to this point, and, you know, I, I'm just ready to continue to stack wins together and finish this last year I have here strong and make it a memorable one. When you got it going in the first half, I mean, did the, what was going through your mind? Did, it, did the record enter your, into your head at all? Did you know you were only 30 points away? Um, actually, no. I mean, it didn't really, I, it wasn't something that I had in my mind. Um, you know, I was just just playing, you know, at, the, at that point, trying to execute the game plan. Um, trying to get off to a fast start as a team. And, you know, whatever the game called for, um, shots were falling. So I wanted to be, continue to be aggressive. My teammates were telling me to continue to be aggressive. So, um, you know, things were just happening. And, fortun and fortunately, it was working in our favor in the first half. We played a really good first half. But I think in the second half, we kind of let up a little bit. And that's something we got to get better at. But, um, you know, for a first game, I think we took a good first step. And, you know, we're going to continue to get better each and every game. So I'm looking forward to the next one. Did it feel any different playing today with the three-point line being moved back? The, the three-point line? Yeah. Uh, no, nah, not really. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, we do a great job of, uh, you know, working on things like that. You know, when new rules are implemented, you know, our coaches are sure that, you know, we're working to um, be in the best position possible when the game time comes. So I think not only myself but other guys felt pretty comfortable in terms of the new line. So um, I think we're going to be a really good shooting team this year. And so, yeah. So, Marcus, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Second of all, first game of the year, first regular season game anyway. Uh, a lot of new guys on the team and stuff. How was the team chemistry today? How to feel out there on the court? Yeah, I mean, this was honestly our first, you know, real uh, live competition. You know, we had the exhibition game, of course, and the, our close scrimmage. But um, in terms of being in front of a, you know, packed house with the crowd and everything, it's our first time really playing at that moment. But I think for the first time, I thought it was we played pretty well. Um, of course, we can get better. You know, we're going to get better th uh, as the year goes on. But uh, we showed real good glimpses of the team we can be, especially in the first half. Um, we have a lot of weapons offensively. Um, you know, Kobe, Sack could really get into the teeth of the defense. Theo, Ed, and Jace, when he gets back, really good down low in, in the post. So um, we're going to be able to do a lot of things offensively. And then defensively, I think we can direct, disrupt a lot of things on the defensive end as well. Um, we got a glimpse of that in the first half, too. Um, but it, it was good to get out there, you know, and play for the first time. And I know everyone's excited. Marcus back here, but uh, kind of going back to that first half, you know, it, I don't know if maybe you can kind of give us a little more insight, but if you looked like a video game out there, you were just going off, having so much fun. What's going through your head when, you know, you hit the second three in a row and you just keep heat checking and just keep making them? Like, what's what's the feeling like, especially knowing that the record's right there and you eventually grasping it? Yeah, you know, it was definitely one of those things where my teammates were kind of just egging me on, you know. Uh, they, they kept actually telling me, you know, to keep shooting, keep shooting. It was actually one of those things that, I was out there playing, out there trying to follow the plan, game plan. But um, guys like Greg and Zach were, and were telling me, you know, hey, like, you're getting close, you're getting close. So, like, keep shooting. <laughs> so uh, when your teammates have that much confidence in you, it just makes things so much easier for you. So I was playing pretty free out there just because my teammates were believing in me that much. Marcus, kind of in that same vein, um, knowing that the, the record was so close and having had the offseason with the record being so close, in a sense, are you just glad that it's done and over with and now you can just play the rest of the season without that hanging I mean, head? honestly, I know a lot of people have, like, talked about it. Me personally, um, of course, it's definitely something that's meaningful and is very, it's truly a blessing, but that wasn't really at all, like, a reason in my mind to, for one, come back or two, to even think about that for myself. I was more so just looking forward to being out, out there, being able to compete with my team. Um, and the things that happen just happen, and you know I'm really grateful for that. But um, it's not something that is like at the top of my of my you know to do list. You know um, I'm just blessed and fortunate enough to where 
that's what's happened in these four years. And I've had, you know, gracious teammates that have let me be who I am. And without them, it wouldn't be possible. But, yeah, you know, the record was never really something that I was going into any type of game thinking, oh, this is what I have to do to reach that goal. I mean, it's just so happened that I've been fortunate enough to um, let that happen on its own. Terrell McNeil, I know you had a chance to develop a relationship with guy. him. Like, what's, That's what what can guy. you say about him? Oh, man. Uh, I mean, I said it um, during our media day, but in terms of just a representative on and off the court for Marquette, you know, there's there's not many people better than Jarrell. Um, he, he's, he's come to be like a big brother to me in terms of like gu a guidance and, you know, um, things that he's gone through in his career. And he's been such a great help to me and, you know, and my development. So, um, to be in a conversation with him is just a blessing and an honor in itself. And, you know, to be in competition with anybody like him who done s has done so much for the jersey on the front, um, it's truly an honor. And, you know, um, he, he's he's a guy who I really look up to in the game of basketball on and off the court. But um, he, he's been a great role model for me so while I've been here at Marquette. Maybe lost in your performance a little bit. Theo had a really good game. I think he had eight blocks or something. Like what? Uh, I've never seen anything like that. What? Uh, what can you? How, how have you seen him improve this year? You know, honestly, like last year, you would be in the conversation like, oh yeah, Theo has a, the potential to be, you know, one of the best rim protectors in the country. There's no doubt about it in my mind. He is the best rim protector in the country. I mean, the way he is able to get off the floor and protect our paint, block shots, you know, disrupt the defense. Um, with his verticality and his aggressiveness. I don't think there's anybody in the country that can do it like he does. And, you know, we're, I'm glad he's on our team and I'm not playing against him. Um, but, you know, he, he, when he plays with that motor and that drive, they're not, there are not many big guys in the country that can really compete with him. And so it being the first game, I'm excited that that's kind of how he got, got off on to a start. And I know he's going to do bigger and better things as the year goes on. But for that to be in the first game, eight blocks, I mean, that's, that's unheard of. You know, and to think he could have a double double in blocks is something that is realistic now. And honestly, when he does it, I'm not going to be surprised because I see it every day in practice. So, I mean, he's going to be a big part of what we do and what we're building here. Uh, with Marcus being the all time leading scorer in Marquette history, what would you say to him in the locker room and how do you kind of put his career in Marquette in perspective? I mean, Marcus has in three years in a half a semester created an incredible legacy at Marquette. Obviously the thing that he's recognized most for by most people uh, is his ability to score. You know, I mean for him to be the all-time leading scorer at this program with all the greats that have played here after his first game in his senior year is just mind-boggling. And that's a credit to who he is as a basketball player. Uh, his legacy at Marquette will be much more than that, though. Uh, he's been a first-class representative of our university. Uh, he's been an incredible example um, of what we want Marquette basketball players to be. And we appreciate him for that. Uh, we also want him to leave a legacy that's beyond just his scoring output. And I think that's what he wants as well. That having been said, did you think that he might get it in the first half the way he was going? Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, he's such a unique player. I mean, he's a one-of-a-kind player. You know, when he, when he gets going, you know, I'm not sure I've seen anyone that can, that can be a one-man wrecking crew like he can uh, offensively because, you know, his ability to make difficult shots is, is – beyond what I've ever seen. And so uh, I thought he had a shot. If he would have made the darn free throw, he needs to work on his, he needs to work on his free throws more apparently. So obviously you've been coaching Marcus a while now. What does it mean for you as a coach to kind of see his development to this point where he is right now? Uh, Marcus has been a joy and a pleasure to coach. And... Um, you know, obviously, you know, Marcus has put us in a position to win a lot of basketball games uh, here at Marquette that, that I've been fortunate to be along for the ride with. Uh, the thing I'll remember and I appreciate the most about Marcus, however, is 
Uh, he, he embodies the total person of what we, what I want while I'm at Marquette, our players to be like. Um, he's an outstanding student. He's engaged in the community. He uses his platform to make our community better. And he represents himself on the basketball court as a player um, in the finest possible manner. And then Theo had a career high eight blocks tonight. How helpful was he on the defensive end? Pretty helpful. Um, you know, Theo's one of the top shot blockers and rim protectors in the country. Uh, you know, I really think that Theo has a chance to be, a, and I've been fortunate to coach, uh, and then as hard as this is to believe, be a national defensive player of the year, probably about 40 pounds ago. Um, but Theo's got a chance to be a defensive player of the year in our league. And I think nationally, I don't think there's anybody that protects the rim better than he does. And tonight was another example of that. Uh, other than Marcus, what did you think of the offensive performance? I think we had quite a number of turnovers. I don't know off the top of my head. I yeah, think we had 21 was. turnovers. You know, obviously not happy with that. Um, I thought defensively, we really, com in the first half, we competed like great. I mean, I, I thought our defense was terrific. Princeton offense is not an easy offense to play against. I thought we really had them sped up. But we were also sped up because I think our guys are really anxious. Sometimes when you're anxious offensively, you can try to force things that, that are not there, and you can put yourself into, in bad positions. Um, you know, we're, we're not a team that's going to win with 21 turnovers. With some of our younger guys, we're gaining experience, not just our freshmen, but some of the, the other guys who are new roles. Turnovers aren't acceptable, but you can expect them. You know, with Marcus and Sakar and Kobe, they had 11 of our 21 turnovers. You know, for us to be good, that can't happen. Uh, the decision to redshirt Dexter, was that just uh, a numbers game with the, with the options in the backcourt? Yeah, you know, number one, um, it, for me, philosophy-wise, you only redshirt a guy that you believe can be a long-term imp impact player. And I think Dexter's going to be a hell of a basketball player at Marquette. You know, we have three guys in Kobe and Marcus and Sakar that have a combined uh, 13 years of college experience. And so they're going to play a lot. And, so, you know, and with, with the way our backcourt numbers are, you know, I, I want Dexter to be a guy that, that we count on you know, heavily when he is ready to do that. And I think the red shirting gives him and us the best chance to maximize his impact on our program, which I think will be huge. Coach, when you get up at, with, by as many points as you did early on, I think it was 20 something to three for a while, does that allow you to experiment with anything or to do anything differently than what you normally would have done uh, against another team? Um, it was, it's a little bit harder against them because they, they're, they're an unconventional team. I mean, offensively, you know, we're not going to play uh, maybe anyone else who runs the Princeton offense. And then defensively, they run a little bit of a different type of zone, a 1-3-1 that morphs into a matchup. And so, you know, it's not, you know, like in terms of an offensive package, it's not a ton of experimenting to do. Uh, I don't think our guys maintain the intensity or the second half that we brought to the first half. And, you know, look, we're, we're going to be in possession games and you got to play for 40 minutes. So that's a lesson that we'll uh, hopefully learn from this game. 